At this time, I'd like to call a regular meeting for of the Duwam City Council for September 2nd, 2014, 5 p.m. to order. First item on the agenda is consent agenda items. What you wishes? Call up for a motion to approve them. Second. We got a motion and a second to approve the consent agenda items. Any discussion on any? I do have one discussion item, uh, Mr. President, on um, the city manager's activity report, page three, the last paragraph. There's some discussion about fixing of Summit Avenue, and I thought you know, that's a lot of people, all of us answer questions about Summit Avenue, so I thought maybe we should just talk a little bit about that, and maybe our city engineer could bring us up to speed on what's going on with Summit. Certainly, Mr. President. Um, 2012, the city undertook a uh, rather extensive utility street uh, improvement up on Summit Avenue from uh, Center Street to 10 South Street. Basically, took all took all the uh, replacement of all the utilities, took the overhead electrical, put them underground. Lots of work up in that area. <coughs> Since then, we've experienced some trench settlement and uh, some of the deep trenching that had taken place up there. For anyone that's driven that segment, you can kind of feel the bumpy ride as we've gone along. We've been working with the contractor, MR Paving and Excavating, to develop a work plan. Um, we had a brief discussion about this <coughs> maybe a month ago, and, and I mentioned at that time, time is kind of on our side. The longer we can let this go, the more settlement will, will take place. So what we came up with last <laughs> week was to go up this fall within the next couple of weeks and uh, repair some of the bad areas, basically just do kind of a skim coat over the settled areas, create a better ride for the winter. We'll take some shots, some elevations of everything up there. Then next spring, we'll kind of see where we're at with the settlement issues. If at that time it looks like it's a prudent prudent to move ahead, we'll perf the contractor will perform a kind of a mill and overlay and bring it up to a better condition and a smooth ride. There, there also is some areas of sidewalk settlement. We'll fix those yet this fall. The contractor is committed to that and a couple areas where some curb and gutter has settled. But with regard to the roadway, we want to try and make sure we get one more freeze thaw or one more winter out of that uh, settlement issue up there. And hopefully everything will turn out fa fine next summer. We'll take care of it and we'll have a brand new road again. So if you have any particular questions, I could attempt to answer those. A brand new, by brand new, you mean an, an overlay over, over the existing? What we would do, counselor, is a mill and overlay. Right. So we would, we've got five inches of blacktop. We don't need to, I mean, it's brand new. We don't need to take all that up. So we'll just get a, a, a level course over the top of the existing pavement. Thank you. And this is something M&R will take on at their expense. Uh, that's, they have indicated that they've accepted responsibility. They, our contractual arrangement is with MR. They've got a contractual arrangement with a subcontractor, so they're working together. Okay. So I don't know that MR is paying for all of it, but the city is not paying for any of it. So. Okay. Thank you very much. Certainly. <clears throat> any more questions? Seeing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed no. Motion carries. Item 2A, consider a motion approving the issuance of a lawful gambling permit for the New Alms Satoma Club to conduct a raffle gambling at the New Alms Country Club. So moved. Second. We got a motion and a second. Any discussion? Seeing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed no. Motion carries. <laughs> Item 2B, consider a motion approving the issuance of a lawful Gambling permit for Cathedral of Holy Trinity conduct a bingo and raffles gambling at Cathedral of Holy Trinity. I'll offer the motion. Second. We got a motion and a second. Any discussion? That's for Friday, November 7th, 2014. Okay. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed no. Motion carries. Item 2C, consider a motion approving the issuance of a temporary 3.2% malt liquor license for the New Alm Area Chamber of Commerce. I'll offer the motion. Second. We got a motion and a second. Any discussion? Well, we have the chamber representative here. I think I asked the question last year, why they didn't, why we're approving a 3.2 and not a hard liquor license or strong beer license? Wasn't it just a difference in cost of the license? I can't remember. 
Name and address. It's Oktoberfest. Right. You can't sell Oktoberfest. <laughs> Audra Shanman, President and CEO of the New Alm Area Chamber of Commerce, um, Council President and Councilor Schultz. We've always gotten a 3.2. I think we felt that we couldn't get a hard one. So this is what we've always gotten. And the answer is? They've never applied for anything stronger than that, so we okay. haven't seen whether they fit into the cubby holes that you have mm -hmm. to fit into in order to have a uh, intoxicating malt liquor license. Mm -hmm. We've never analyzed that. Mm -hmm. uh, okay. It has to do with being an appropriate nonprofit organization. Uh, it has to do with the location where you're at. It has to do with how many days you do it in a year. So they've never really asked us to look at those <coughs> criteria to determine whether they qualify. They just apply for the mm -hmm. 3.2. But they probably would qualify. Some they could. I don't know. Mm -hmm. I, you know mm -hmm. uh, yeah. Some they can maybe look at for next year or something. Sell Oktoberfest at Oktoberfest. Thank you. <laughs> <coughs> Any other questions? Seeing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed no, motion carries. Item 3A, number one, consider a resolution approving the issuance of a Daniel, for Daniel Walden for a simple lot division of the property located at 1104 North German Street. I'll offer garden, the resolution. Garden, garden. Or garden, sorry. <laughs> I'll offer the resolution waive the reading approving with the conditions the request for a simple lot division. Second. We got a motion and a second. Offer the resolution waive the reading. Any more discussion? Well, when this came before, uh, before uh, the planning commission, uh, basically we got a house that um, is sits on a double lot uh, in the front of the lot on uh, North Garden, 11th and uh, North Garden. Um, and the, the property has has been offered uh, for sale relatively recently. But the <laughs> house itself, although it sits in a, on a double lot, is within just a foot uh, of the okay. lot line. Uh, and so um, the request is uh, in order uh, to more uh, appropriately divide it into two lots, uh, essentially have the, the uh, front half of the uh, lot, two lots in the back half of the two lots. I, I'm, I'm sure that's clear from the picture, but there was unanimous uh, approval, recommendation for approval with the conditions at the planning meeting. Any questions? Seeing none, finance director, please call the roll. Councilor Fisher? Yes. Councilor Rockfam? Yes. Councilor Schultz? Yes. Councilor Webster? Yes. President Schmitz? Yes. Motion carries. Item 3A, number two, consider approval of a preliminary plot for Wake for 4th edition located at 1320 Oak Street. I'll offer the motion. Second. We got a motion to second. Any discussion? Um, well, at the Planning Commission, again, that was a unanimous <coughs> approval. Uh, there's really just some technical reasons why this needs uh, to be platted. It's my understanding that uh, that the property is uh, quite sloped and may or may not be an easily buildable lot, but uh, it's being platted for sale to one of the adjoining properties. And again, like I said, there was unanimous approval. Thank you. Any more discussion? Seeing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed no. Opposed carries. Item 3A, number three. Consider approval of a petition for Elaine Pa and Debbie Rugger to rezone as I-2 General Industrial District property petition for annexation into the city of New Ulm and located at 16203 County Road 29. I'll offer the motion. Second. We got a motion and a second. Any discussion? Mr. President? Yes. Uh, yes, go ahead. This seems to go hand in hand with item 5H, yes. and it seems to me they ought to be tied together so that the approval is subject to action on 5H, positive action. Thank you. Sounds good to me. What should we do first? Uh, frankly, you may want to just defer this one until you take up 5H okay. and do them both at once. All right. Okay. Yeah. All right. A motion? Or just, do we need a motion to do that? You can just table it until you get to 5H. Okay, yeah. we'll just, all right. All right. Sounds great. Here the chair. All right, we'll go on to 4A, number one and two. 
consider <coughs> ordinance amending section 8.29 with the city code city of new Ulm relative to keeping animals in said city can can we just go to 5h do we want to do that i we do can do that yeah all right I'll forget what I was going to say. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's just wait. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Five eight. Set a resolution approving the annexation pe petition for Elaine Pa and Debbie Reiger for the property located at 16023 County Road 29. And I'll offer this resolution. Second. We got a motion and a second to offer resolution. We have reading and discussion. Well, uh, the annexation of this uh, uh, property is uh, to allow the Shell uh, Brewing Company uh, to purchase and use property within the uh, city limits. Uh, and I think people, I know the Planning Commission was interested in uh, hearing the uh, brewery's plans, and I know there's several uh, representatives from the brewery here, and so I think the council might want to hear uh, what what what's the plan here i would i'd like to hear here we go <laughs> <laughs> big guy so what do you need my name uh -huh. Cereal. 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 <laughs> ted marty uh, august shell brewing so uh, over the years we've obviously grown quite a bit and so in we've been looking for another piece of property that basically fits our needs and uh, so that, hence the reason for purchasing the Arndt property, or at least trying to purchase it. Uh, the initial plant, we don't need that building yet um, because we still have some growth capacity at the brewery. But, um, you know, you never know in this business. If we grow suddenly, mm -hmm. then we need a place to go. And uh, I guess our first choice is New Alm as opposed to some other city. But sure. And, um, but in the meantime, we are going to construct a smaller building to house our sour beer project. <coughs> and that's something fairly recent. <coughs> it's been about two years in the making. Um, the, the beer is, is, is made with uh, lactobac lactobacillus, which is a bacteria, and wild yeast. And so you don't want them in your regular brewery. So... So we're going to set up a separate operation there. Uh, we have <coughs> two wooden tanks at the brewery, and, and the wood tanks work the best, and we have eight of them in storage. So uh, we would put them out there right away. And so, so that's the, the initial plan. The name of this new beer will be called Nord Yeast? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no. Well, I was wondering if we needed to change the city code in order to allow, allow wild yeast. Oh, no. The city limits. It's not I'm ethanol. Sorry. No. no. <laughs> well, it is ethanol, but it's So you, not. will you be building a couple new buildings out there or just using the existing Well, initially the, the smaller building will go up to house that and some, and some garage facilities. Mm -hmm. Okay. And then we would project that we would run out of warehouse space first, where we currently are as we grow. So then probably a warehouse might get constructed, and then as we continue to grow, then the, the additional buildings, the brewery buildings would be added on. So. Thank you. Any more questions for us? Sounds good. Okay, thanks. Mm -hmm. Well, and Mr. President, more to the point when this appeared uh, in front of the uh, Planning uh, Commission, uh, there was unanimous unanimous uh, approval with the understanding that this is an appropriate use of uh, this property and uh, and uh, you know fits the uh, character of the neighborhood and uh, you know all the things that the Planning Commission looks at were were uh, approved. So we didn't hear any concerns from neighbors or anything no. like that. So no. Okay. I'd better ask the question. Mm -hmm. So, Mr. President? Yes. Was the motion intended to cover both 5H and 3A3? Is that what you intend? To annex and uh, change the zoning classification. Zoning classification. It, can, it can be, yes. Okay. Right. Any more discussion? Seeing none, Finance Director, please call the roll. Councilor Fisher? Yes. Councilor Rockfam? Yes. Councilor Schultz? Yes. Councilor Webster? Yes. President Schmitz? Yes. Motion carried. <laughs> now, 4A, number one and two. 
consider an ordinance amending section 8.29 of the city code city of new Ulm, relative to keeping animals in said city number one is second reading of ordinance number 14-120 fourth series and number two would be a motion to adopt ordinance number 14-120 fourth series mm -hmm. mr Nierengarten. mr president this is <coughs> ordinance number 14-124 series city of new Ulm, brown county minnesota reflecting changes requested by the city council as a result of the last council meeting where this was originally considered and this is an ordinance amending um just uh Mr. President, yes. um, you know, before we start, I would ask that uh, my fellow counselors uh, pay particular uh, attention to uh, paragraph seven, uh, the the third line, uh, because I'm going to uh, propose a, a slight modification to that. Be it ordained by the City Council of the City of New Orleans, Section 1, that's Section 8.29, Subdivision 2, of the city code of the city of New Ulm is hereby amended to add the following: J, chickens, provided that owners that the owner holds a valid permit from the city to keep chickens and complies with the provisions of this section. Section two, that section 8.29 of the city code of the city of New Ulm is hereby amended to add the following: subdivision seven, chickens. Chickens are allowed on any lot w with a single family residence that is issued a permit to do so by the city. A, generally. No roosters are permitted. All chickens must be hens. If a permit holder inadvertently keeps a rooster, then that rooster must be removed within 24 hours of the date of discovery. Two, chicken food is to be kept in containers designed to eliminate access by rodents or other pets. Three, a run or exercise yard conforming with this section is required. Four, chickens must not be kept in such a manner as to constitute a nuisance to the occupants of adjoining properties, adjacent property. Five, dead chickens must be disposed of according to applicable law and must be removed within 24 hours. Six, chicken manure is to be caned, contained within a weather and pest proof container and removed weekly or composted or used as fertilizer. Chicken manure must not be allowed to accumulate in such a way as to cause an unsanitary condition or odors detectable on other property. Seven, chickens kept under this subdivision may not be slaughtered within the city. Eight, no more than four chickens may be kept at any one property at any t one time. Nine, chickens must be confined inside a coop or a fenced in run at all times and no one may allow chickens to range freely. B, chicken permits. A permit issued by the city and approved by the city. Well, wait, 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 that's not right. We took that out. <laughs> there we go. We didn't want to do that anymore, so we took that out. Um, a permit issued by the city. Uh, is required to keep chickens. The applicant application for a permit fee shall be set by the city council. A person lasts uh, a permit lasts for two years from the date of issuance. The provisions of this ordinance apply to an approved application for the same time period, at uh, which time a new permit must be applied for. Four, the application must specify the number of chickens anticipated. Five, a permit be allowed may allow may allow between one and four chickens. Six. Only one permit per lot. If a person wishes to keep chickens at multiple lots, then that person must obtain a different permit for each lot. Seven, a permit may only be issued if all the owners of the adjoining property approve of the application by assigning the application form. Adjoining property means all property within 50 feet of the lot line of the property that the applicant is applying for a permit to keep chickens on. If an adjoining property is occupied by a tenant of a, a rental property, both ten, uh, then both the tenant and the owner must approve and sign. If there are multiple rental units in an adjoining property, such as an apartment building, then every tenant in addition to the registered owner must approve, sign and approve. If an adjoining property is owned by an, uh, a business or other entity, then the application must be approved and signed by an individual with authority to bind the business slash entity. If adjoining property is owned by the city, by the state or the city, or another governmental unit, then the application must be approved and signed by an individual with authority to bind the governmental unit. Eight, if the applicant is living in a rental property, then the registered property owner must also sign and approve the application. Nine, permits are non-transferable and do not run with the property. <coughs> Ten, uh, a permit constitutes a limited license granted to the chicken ke uh, keeper by the city and in no way creates a vested zoning right. <coughs> 11 site plans and coop designs are to be included with the permit application. A site must be a part of a uh, site plan must be a part of the document approved by the adjoining property owners. 
C, by accepting the permit, the applicant is authorizing the city to inspect chickens, <coughs> the chickens and facility during normal city hall work hours. Law enforcement is exempt from this normal work hours limitation. D, coops and runs. Coops and runs must be constructed and maintained to meet the following minimum standards. One, a separate recoup, recoup is required to house the chickens. The coop may not be attached to or inside of any other structure, such as a home or garage. Two, only one coop is permitted per lot. Three, the coop must be fully enclosed. Four, the maximum height shall not exceed six feet. Five, the maximum total square area, square, total square area of the coop and run shall not exceed 72 square feet. Six, six uh, maximum coop size shall not exceed 16 square feet, four square feet per chicken. Seven, the run size shall not exceed 56 square feet and must have at least 10 square feet per chicken. The run must be fenced in on all sides and include a roof. The height of the run fence and roof must not exceed six feet. Then we skip down to eight. The coop must be at least 24 inches off the ground, or in the alternative, the coop may be placed on, the, on a <coughs> concrete plaid. pad. Nine, there must be sufficiently sized windows to permit natural light inside. Windows must be able to be opened for ventilation. Uh, Ten, the construction must be done in a workmanlike manner and with durable materials. Eleven, the coop and run must be located in the backyard of the property. Twelve, there must be sufficient uh, moisture drainage to keep the co well co coop well drained. Thirteen, the coop must be rodent and predator proof. A, uh, a door or access point to the coop or run shall be able to be locked or otherwise secured. Fourteen, coops and runs must com be constructed to comply with setbacks applicable to the zoning district in which the property to be permitted is located. Uh, Fifteen, in addition to complying with all other applicable setbacks, Coops must be at least 25 feet away from the applicant's residence and any neighboring residence on the, an adjoining lot. 16, coop designs must meet basic <coughs> and main needs of chickens, including heat, cooling, food, water, and protection from the elements. E, violations. Any person who commits, causes, permits, or allows a violation of the provisions of this section shall be guilty of a petty misdemeanor punishable by a $25 fine. Each day during which a condition exists which is in violation of this section shall be deemed a separate violation. Two, if a permit holder has two convictions under this subdivision with any two, within any, any two-year period, then that permit shall be revoked. Upon revocation, all chickens must be removed from the property within 48 hours. Then section three, that this ordinance shall take effect and shall be enforced <coughs> 30 days from and after its adoption, approval, and publication. And section four, that this ordinance shall expire two years from and after the date it takes effect and shall require a separate ordinance to extend or continue the provisions of this ordinance. In the usual form of signature attestation and approval follows. Thank you. Any questions? <laughs> you can take a breath now. Thank you. Well, Mr. President, I, I would uh, again call uh, the council's attention to line three of uh, paragraph seven uh, and respectfully move uh, to change uh, the language of that second set sentence to read adjoining property means all property within 50 feet of the location of the coop and run I would second that. I think what we were talking about there is concern that now we're going back to going 50 feet from the front yard again, which is not what we talked about before. Yes, I mean, there's a, there's a front lot line, there's a back lot line, there's two side lot lines, and people, I, 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 anyway, that's, I think that was more in line with what we talked about. Correct. I, I'd agree. All right. I guess I'm okay with that. Mm -hmm. The only thing I didn't see in there was the the name of the enforcing officer. Well, it'll be the building inspection department. No, it'll be the, the coop cop. cop. <laughs> <laughs> I have, Mr. To President, I have, a, a <laughs> <laughs> I have a comment, too, on also on number seven. It states that um, um, all adjoining properties um, approve of the application by signing the application I guess in my mind and I know I wasn't here the last couple of meetings but I was hoping that those there would be a letter that would go out from the city maybe from the inspections I don't know if you discussed that or mm -hmm. um, 
I was hoping that that approval yeah. would come from I know in the papers com from. <coughs> I, I, Commissioner or Councilor Fisher, I know in our original meetings there was talk almost all the different cities had the rec had that requirement right. in there. So I think to have less staff time involvement, right. could we do it? We probably could. I don't feel real strongly one way or the other. It just said it'd be less staff time if we right. have them bring it. I suppose somebody from the office is still going to have to verify that that's a signature, probably. Um, but they didn't for Of course, if they found out they forged a signature, someone's going to find out pretty quickly. Anyway. <laughs> yeah, yeah, there we go. So. I, just feel, I just feel like the neighbors, it's harder, you know, if they're, they're true feelings, if they really don't want chickens, it's going to be hard to say to yeah. their neighbor's face, you know. It was just a thought that I kind of... Mm -hmm. That well, and that one of the things is, is going to, it's going to be in effect for two years, and I'm sure that we are That's going to true. hear about any problems, and we That's can certainly true. change that. Yeah. One way or the other. So. One way or right. the other. Right. Correct. Right. right. Yeah. Or shut it down. Mm -hmm. yeah. 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 Okay. I don't think we're going to have a big run on it anyway. No, I don't either. No, right. based on our research, we're not going to no. have pretty minimal mm -hmm. applications anyway. Mm -hmm. So. Mr. President, City Council members, yes. the, one of the enforcement officers did raise the question about uh, if there's, uh, was it number five, dead chickens must be disposed of according to applicable law and must be removed within 24 hours. Uh, that s staff person thought that, you know, a dead chicken laying there for 24 hours seems like a long time. And they thought maybe that it should be upon notification or upon smell, knowledge as a dead chicken that it has to be <coughs> removed. Uh, 24 hours just seemed like a long time in the middle of summer at 95 degree temperatures Ooh. kind of a thing. That once they were put on notice there's a dead chicken that they just got to take care of it right then and there. The time. Rather than having the full 24 yeah. hours should that situation occur but this is the enforcement people that are going to be having to deal with this yes. so right. this yeah, is what true. they're concerned about what we, what we could say there is shall be removed immediately and in any event within 24 hours mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. i'll add that I to my look. motion i like that yeah, will you add that to I'll your second, second? Any other discussion? Ideas? Concerns? So for those people watching, this would go into effect 30 days from after it's publis published, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. which would be on or about? Sometime in December. Mm -hmm. <laughs> time after it's Just getting cold. <laughs> right. <laughs> right in the spring. Mm -hmm. Probably the spring. Mm -hmm. But officially it would be October, mm -hmm. early October. Well, it depends upon whether the council wants another version of this back mm -hmm. to review before you act on it. I don't, I don't think. I don't, I don't think that's a, necessary. I don't see major changes here. Just those few changes, no. we shouldn't. Okay. Well, I don't know. No, I'm just <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, from a technical point of view, I think first we vote on my motion uh, to um, make those two amendments, oh, yeah. and then we'll vote on the ordinance itself. Okay. Okay. So I'll call the question. May. Any more discussion? All, all in favor of those two amendments, say aye. 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 Opposed, no. Motion carries. And then we'll entertain a motion to adopt the ordinance. So moved. Second. We got a motion to the second to adopt ordinance number 14 120, fourth series, amending section 8.29 of the city code relative to keeping animals in said city. Any more discussion? See it done. All in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed, no. Motion carries. Thank you. A question is: Is it is a chicken, <laughs> an animal, or is it a fowl, a bird? It's order it's genus a, species. It's a fowl. Yeah. <laughs> it's still an animal. It's still an animal. Critter. Okay, <laughs> we, we could call it. We're animals. <laughs> <laughs> oh, speak for yourself. <laughs> <laughs> Well, go on. <laughs> Item 4B, consider resolution approving the development agreement with Skyline Terrace LLC for the tax increment financing for District uh, H-7 at 2107 North Highland Avenue. I'll offer the resolution. Wave the reading. Second. We got a motion to second to offer the resolution. Wave the reading. Any discussion? Um, and... I, this 
Does the that city happen? attorney have anything to say about this? This is yeah. very standard for the uh, development agreements we've been doing for these projects, mm -hmm. these housing projects that have been yep. seeking uh, TIF assistance. Mm -hmm. And we do these on a pay-as-you-go basis mm -hmm. where basically we support a debt service coverage ratio. And if they don't reach that debt service coverage ratio by reason of their operational income, then we take on an annual basis TIF available to supplement that. Whatever isn't used in a year is lost and goes back to the other taxing jurisdictions. So there's not a big savings account getting piled up here. Mm -hmm. And um, what happens is that these developers use this document as a way to uh, buttress their financing applications, mm -hmm. saying that we have the city that's willing to come in and with TIF uh, proceeds out of this project, facilitate the uh, uh, support of our debt service coverage. And most lenders will have a debt service coverage requirement. And we've seen those range between anywhere from, oh, 1.1 to 1.2, somewhere around in there. So we, that's typically the range we're in to, to, the, to support these things. Very standard. These are being treated just like uh, th three others that are that are recently approved or pending. Good. And it, look, it, <coughs> well, it looks like they're about to uh, start construction promptly. Is that uh, my yeah, Mr. President, City yes. Council members, uh, you may have uh, uh, memory of this particular project. This goes back five oh. or six years. Uh, oh, right. The, the, right. the Winkleman project out right. on mm -hmm. behind uh, uh, Mount Martin. Yeah. Yeah, mm -hmm. The old Kmart. So uh, this is this has been on our our desk for quite uh, a long time. Uh, they revived this in the last two or three months. Asked for the development agreement to mm -hmm. be brought back up, uh, brought up to speed, which we've done, mm -hmm. and they're prepared to uh, initiate their construction project. Uh, it's one of <laughs> you know the five uh, that were potential uh, for 2014, mm -hmm. and as we see, we'll probably end up with uh, at least. Uh, three or, or four okay. this year. Thank you. Any more discussion? Seeing none, Finance Director, please call the roll. Councilor Fisher. Yes. Councilor Rockfam. Yes. Councilor Schultz. Yes. Councilor Webster. Yes. President Schmitz. Yes, motion carries. Item 4C, consider proposed request for proposals. Document to lease out the City Hall's parking lot sign. I'll offer the motion. I'll second. second. We got a motion and a second. Any discussion? Um, uh, staff I'm is requesting that we have some flexibility to make minor adjustments as we yeah. go through this thing. Since we had got done really fast right before the agenda got cranked. <laughs> <laughs> I had one potential con. I want to see what other counselors thought about if we had a. We do have a number of sign companies in this town. Would we want to make a requirement that the sign be purchased by? In New Ulm? No, you can't. No, no we would no. not. Okay, no. just thought I'd ask. Call for the question. Okay. Uh, let's see, was I rather get myself back here? <laughs> okay. All in favor say aye. 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 Polls don't. Motion carries. Well, we needed a timeline on there, didn't we? That wasn't filled out as far as. Are you going to just make that a decision internally? It's going to go right away. Didn't yeah, I, I see something on here where it was um, just was a filled in return time? On. But that's just something you'll do, Brian. Yeah, I I would expect that we would probably get this thing cranked out and advertised Weeks. real okay. fast here. Mm -hmm. I didn't know if you wanted some. It's not. It, we're not talking months. We're talking mm. yeah a days. week. Mm -hmm. You know, sure. The, the reply to a week. The reply time may be a little longer though because right. they're required to put together some schematics and right. have a real plan that they come in with. Right. Mm -hmm. So I wouldn't anticipate that you're actually going to get <laughs> proposals in here in less than 60 days because right. somebody's going to have to hire a sign advisor, consultant, right. and probably do some measurements and mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yep. Okay. budget, that kind of stuff. <coughs> mm -hmm. Thank you. Any more discussion? Did we have a motion? I forgot. Mm -hmm. uh, for resolution? I thought so, yeah. Yes. Okay. Yep. Motion and a second. Mm -hmm. All right. Yeah. Finance Director, please call the roll. Or is that? Just a motion. I'm on the motion. Just a motion. motion. All in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed no. Motion carries. I was one ahead already. <laughs> okay. Consider resolution authorizing the close closure of the alley adjacent to the B&L Bar Building, 15 North Minnesota Street, 
and the extension of the liquor license into the closed alley area on Friday, September 19, 2014, at five <laughs> from 5 p.m. to 10 p.m. I'll offer the resolution. Waive the reading. Second. We got a motion and a second. To offer the resolution. Waive the reading. Any discussion? Seeing none. Finance director, please call the roll. Councilor Fisher. Yes. Councilor Rockfam. Yes. Councilor Schultz. Yes. Councilor Webster. Yes. President Schmitz. Yes. Motion carries. Item 5B, consider resolution authorizing the closure of the alley adjacent to the B&L Bar building at 15 North Minnesota Street and the extension of the liquor license into the closed alley area during October Fest on mm -hmm. Saturday, October 4th and Saturday, October 11th, 2014 from 6 p.m. to 10 p.m. with the option sure. of hosting music during the d during that time. I'll offer the resolution. I'll second it. We got a motion and a second to offer a resolution. Waive the reading. Any discussion? Well, this is the first time they're going to be um, uh, doing this during Oktoberfest. Is that correct? That's mm -hmm. correct. Right. Uh, they have uh, held this activity at other times during the year for probably the last three, four mm -hmm. years. Mm -hmm. This is the first time for this. Well, we'll see how it goes. Any more discussion? See you Finance director, please call the roll. Councilor Fisher. Yes. Councilor Rockfam. Yes. Councilor Schultz. Yes. Councilor Webster. Yes. President Schmitz. Yes. Motion carries. Item 5C, consider a motion authorizing the city manager and the fire chief to proceed with the process of acquiring a new aerial ladder truck for the fire department. I'll offer the motion. I'll second that. We got a motion and a second. Any discussion? Well, we, we do have our fire we chief do have here. Our fire do we want to have him say a few words about Everybody what we're looking call? at? Yep. He's 22 years old. Paul Mako, Newham Fire Chief, uh, President Schmitz, and Councilors. <coughs> the, uh, the truck that we're we're proposing that we replace is a 1992 Seagraves 110 foot aerial truck. Uh, this truck gets uh, the the ladder gets certified every year by a uh, company that we we have come in, and um, they rate the deficiencies in this in this truck. Uh, now the number they rate them one, two, and three. The ones, of course, have to be uh, uh, repaired. Those deficiencies need to be repaired immediately in order to keep the certification. Uh, the number twos are ones uh, they point out to us that are um, uh, going to need to be kept an eye on and, and are more than likely going to need to get fixed before the next time they come in to certify our ladder. And of course the number threes are the ones uh, that uh, are going to be uh, problems in the future. Um, the list uh, of course, it's getting bigger as the truck is, is getting older, and the maintenance costs are going to continue to rise uh, <laughs> as those deficiencies continue to rise. Um, the latest, in order to fix the, the latest twos and threes, we're looking at about $18,000. Mm -hmm. um, except for the final one on the number threes, which is a leak on a rotation gearbox <coughs> on the back side of this aerial truck. That's what makes the turntable. Uh, that the ladder is mounted to turn. Uh, we noticed some leaks on that, and that's probably probably my biggest concern mm -hmm. on this truck. Um, we just think it's prudent to uh, look at uh, getting a new truck now before we have an uncertified ladder mm -hmm. uh, or something catastrophic happens where we have a big layover time. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And uh, I just think it would be a good idea since uh, we're probably looking at least, you know, anywhere from 14 to 16 months in this whole process before yeah. we'd even take delivery of, wow. of a truck. Wow. And it'll be 23 years old by then. And it'll oh, be yeah. 23 years old then, yeah. correct. Uh, Mr. President, with this new truck, how many, uh, how tall is the ladder? Is it taller than say the, the ladder that we have now? I mean, how high can it, is it? We would like to keep it at 110 feet. Is that the standard average for, I mean, I. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, they some of them come smaller, but I think 100 and, around 110 is pretty standard. Okay. And my second question is, do we have any more larger vehicles like this that we need to replace in, say, the next five years? Uh, I believe we have an engine um, that was purchased in 1989. Oh. So what do they run? 
you know, about uh, they'll run about 400, 450,000. Mm -hmm. okay. uh, we're expecting this aerial truck. Uh, we uh, we did a little bit of homework on some of the latest deliveries at something that's comparable to what we're looking at, and those came in at just oh at like eight hundred and thirteen, eight hundred and ten thousand dollars. <coughs> Mr. Rizzo, yes. uh, <clears throat> is this the uh, ladder truck that fought the AMPI fire? Correct. Yeah, all right. I remember those pictures. Yeah. So it's done its job. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Go ahead. And then, uh, go ahead. Is there any residual value to the truck for well, other use? Um, if it's certified, <coughs> we might be able to sell it. How much we're going to get for it, I don't know. There's, unfortunately, there's no such thing as trade-ins in uh, uh, fire apparatus business. <laughs> you burn your bridges, I guess, huh? Don't put it in. There'd probably be a little city that would right. pick it up or something, potentially. Sell it on eBay. Right. <laughs> yeah. Could you donate it and take a deduction? Right. Well, my, my last question is just about the budget and where we're, this obviously was budgeted for for this year and mm -hmm. assuming. And, you know. I believe uh, that fund is has 977000 budgeted for this truck. Yeah, I'll, I'll, uh, I'll just kind of go over this uh, real quick. But mm -hmm. uh, each year, uh, you might recall the 290 fund. It's our CIP mm -hmm. fund. Mm -hmm. We have sinking funds in there. We put away... 200 and some thousand each year mm -hmm. for fire equipment okay. um, for this particular truck um, by the end of 2015 with that budget will uh, as long as it's approved uh, the way that we have it presented uh, there should be 977,000 there approximately mm -hmm. um, and um, currently we haven't budgeted the use of those funds um, but we can easily build that in there and use the fund balance um, that we have sure. available for this. So okay. um, we can build this in after this point and, and uh, make that adjustment either at the preliminary or the final mm -hmm. uh, budget. So, um, and just to clarify, um, just to add to uh, Paul's comments, uh, engine 60, we have slated for 2017 which that's a fairly small one. We have budgeted about 53,000 for that one, but then uh, engine 10, um, that's 2019 is when that one is mm -hmm. slated for. So that's 550,000 mm -hmm. is what we'll have for that. Gosh. So okay. um, we've been trying to put aside um, prudently mm -hmm. um, for all these trucks. So, mm -hmm. cause they're some big, <coughs> some big items on a few of these so mm -hmm. it's also very possible that this wouldn't show up until the 2016 budget just on the mm -hmm. delivery time so sure. because we have the money <coughs> we'll insert it in the you know the proper mm -hmm. year set aside budget as okay. as needed mm -hmm. uh, but with the new tax laws we're not paying tax on that either correct correct oh that's right we save a lot of money. Yes, you're darn right. A lot right. of money. 70000 Right. Ouch. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Any more discussion? Seeing none. All in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed, no. Motion carries. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you Paul. You. Item 5D. First reading of ordinance number 14-121, fourth series, amending section 9.04 of the city code, city of Nome, relative to zoning of said city. Mr. Neergaard. Mr. President, this is ordinance number 14-121, fourth series, City of New Ulm, Brown County, Minnesota, and ordinance amending section 9.04 of the City Code of the City of New Ulm relative to zoning in said city, be it ordained by the City Council of the City of New Ulm, section 1, that the zoning map referenced in subdivision 2 of section 9.04 of the City Code is hereby amended as follows. Lot 1 and Lot B of Lot 2, Block 62, north of Center Street, City of New Ulm, Brown County, Minnesota, here, here to zone, for zone B1, Limited Business District is hereby redesignated and rezoned to B3, General Business District, Section 2, that the City Engineer is hereby ordered to make the necessary alterations to the official map of the City of Nome to reflect this change, Section 3, that this ordinance shall be uh, take effect and shall be enforced 30 days after its passage, approval, and publication, and the usual form of signature attestation and approval follows. 
Thank you. Item 5E, consider resolution approving Domindot Office of Aeronautics Grant Agreement Number 06770. I'll offer the resolution to waive the reading. Second. We got a motion and a second to offer the resolution. Waive the reading. Any discussion? Forward. Mr. President, I'll, I just point out when we, uh, when this council authorized this federal grant, we were looking at a 95% reimbursement, and since the MnDOT agreement, they've kicked in another two and a half percent, so we're down to about twenty-four thousand dollars city costs for approximately forty-nine acres of property. Mm -hmm. Wow, that's a pretty good deal. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Any more discussion? Mm. Seeing none. Finance director, please call the roll. Councillor Fisher. Yes. Councillor Rockfam. Yes. Councillor Schultz. Yes. Council Webster? Yes. President Schmitz? Yes, motion carries. Item 5F, consider a motion approving the task force order number 2010-12 mm -hmm. for the airport engineering services to the Mead and Hunt professional services contract. So moved. Second. We got a motion and a second. <coughs> May I discussion? Well, we're moving forward. Seeing none, that's for a amount of $117,886. Did you have some right? Mr. President and City Council members, just again, I think for the public record, this is this is for the, uh, the initial planning process. This is not the approval for the construction of no. this facility. <laughs> there has been some uh, questions that uh, have come my way in recent months regarding the crosswind runway. Uh, this is the first step in order to to uh, see that happen at some time in the future, but it's not like it's imminent next year. This is a ways down the road yet. All right. Thank you. Any more discussion? Okay. Seeing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed no. Motion carries. Item 5G, consider a motion approving the final assessment rolls for the 2013 Utility Street and Alley Improvements Group 1 and set a date for public hearing for Tuesday, October 21st, 2013. 14 at 5 p.m. Well, for the motion. Second. second. We got a motion and a second. Any discussion? Mm -hmm. Seeing none. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed no. Motion carries. Okay. Six. Now we'll go to 6A. Consider acceptance of a list of claims paid in the amount of $1,016,641.21. So moved. Second. second. We got a motion and a second. Any discussion? Seeing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, no. Motion carries. Item 6B, consider approval of a list of claims to be paid in the amount of $1,391,927.83. Moved. Second. We got a motion and a second. Any discussion? <coughs> Seeing none, all in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed, no. Motion carries. But no more business to be concluded at this meeting. Meeting adjourned.